A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst, and he said to them, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and he said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst, and he said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Christ is risen. Truly he is risen. Christos vos cres, vos istino vos cres, Christos anesti, alitos anesti. Well, Father Francis is with you on this second Sunday of the holy uh, season of Easter. And I hope that you're having a, an absolutely glorious uh, mystagogia. This is what we call the, the period after Easter, I'm going to lower this down just a tad. There we go. Uh, the, the mystery, the mysterious resurrection appearances of Jesus to his disciples again. And so today, here we are in that upper room and we are with the disciples. The first time that Jesus comes and says, peace be with you. And this, my friends, is his greatest gift to us next to salvation and eternal life, but his peace that we can know here and now uh, and experience and live it uh, no matter what the circumstances may uh, entail for us as we go through, um, you know, still on this, this side, the, you know, the, the, the resurrection is this wonderful demarcation between life and death and history. You know, we're still on that one side of the resurrection experience. We get a little foretaste from time to time, but uh, we still have yet to enter into the fullness of the, the resurrection experiences of Jesus. Um, this Sunday, interestingly enough, in the old calendar, is known as Dominica in Albis de Ponendis. Dominica in Albis de Ponendis. What does that, what does that mean? It's a Latin phrase. Uh, it is the setting aside of the white garment. Now it's also second Sunday of Easter is also Divine Mercy Sunday, as many of you know. And I think that when I think about the original, uh, the original understanding or the original uh, theme of this Sunday of Easter, and not to diminish anything about uh, Divine Mercy Sunday, because <clears throat> it's almost like second Easter. And I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, that this is also uh, the Pascha for the um, Eastern Catholics and the Orthodox. So, happy Pascha. Christos vos cres, vos istino vos cres, okay? So, um, but again, the second Sunday of Easter is kind of like a, a twofer, you know, when little kids, you know, get two scoops of ice cream, you know. Well, you've been awfully good, Johnny, so we're going to give you two, you know, two scoops, you know, twofer, you get a twofer, you know, or a two for one, you know. And in many ways, that's what the second Sunday of Easter is all about, is, you know, the, 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 it, it's not just, you know, a lot of times in our secular world, we, we celebrate a day, if, if that, you know, Christmas uh, comes and goes so quickly. 
And when as Catholic Christians, we're still celebrating the Christmas season and people look at you like you're crazy. Christmas was last week, you know. Well, it's the same with Easter. You know, Easter is, is you know, we have five weeks of Easter, uh, I believe, or is it seven weeks of Easter? I think it's seven weeks of Easter. I could be wrong. Check me on that, okay? Um, and so, you know, there's this unfolding of the mystery of Christ's resurrection. And to some extent, we're never going to fully understand and let alone appreciate all that he has done for us uh, by going to the cross and uh, then suffering as he did and then, you know, dying on that cross. But then three days later, of course, he, he, he has risen. Christ is risen. Truly he is risen. And that's why we, that's the Easter anthem. You know, that's why you say it, you know, especially in the Eastern Rite Church. It's, you know, Christ is risen. Truly he is risen. You know, and they say that over and over and over and over again, you know. The, the great Easter tropar, Christ is risen from the dead, trampling death by death, and to those in the tombs giving life, Christ is risen from the... And you know, on, 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 on and on it goes. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful, beautiful, powerful words that echo throughout the whole Easter season. But here we are in the upper room, and uh, we are told the story of Thomas, the doubting Thomas. And, you know, there's so many ways of kind of looking at this uh, gospel. And there's two things that I guess I'll focus on just for this little video homily. And the first one is this, is that when the Lord Jesus appears to the disciples, we're told that they are fearful. They're fearful uh, simply because fear of the Jews. But I would submit uh, in my own, and this is just my own conjecture, so you're free to take it or toss it. But maybe they're also a little fearful. <laughs> what if Jesus does rise? What if Jesus is risen? You know, what does that mean for us? For the most, for most of them, there's, there's some moment of, of probably a great anxiety because why? Well, the last time they saw Jesus, as he was going up to the cross, they were running away from the cross. And even one or two of them denied the Lord, let alone, of course, one of them, of course, betrayed him. And so when we have let somebody down that we, that we love and we're not there for them or we, maybe we don't take their side in an issue, let's say, a dispute, and... You know, we probably are going to feel very uncomfortable when we see that person again. Because after all, you know, we know the story, right? When Jesus appears, you know, the first thing he says to him, he says, where were you guys at? Where were you when I needed you the most? Right? Remember that? Remember when Jesus said that? He said, you guys really let me down. How could you? Where were you when I needed you? Right? Remember Jesus saying those words, right? Probably don't because he never said those words. <laughs> Many of us would say those words if we were in the same, same set of circumstances. And yet, what does he do? No incrimination. No, you know, um, lecturing them about how weak and uh, lack of faith they had. He doesn't, you know, try to even try to, he doesn't even bring it up. You know, he just simply says, Peace be with you. That's all he says. And I love this gospel because it says that the Jews were, because they were fearful, they were behind locked doors. They were behind locked doors. And how many of us have locked doors on the Lord when, you know, he comes to us and says, you know, all I want to do is give you a eternal life and abundant life here and now. And a lot of times we say, yeah, thanks, Jesus, but not right now, <laughs> or maybe later, or, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe there's something that we hold on to in our lives and we're not ready to let it go. And yet we're told that the Lord in his, this mystical, loving way can, can get through those locked doors. They, they really don't stop him. For those who really love the Lord, those locked doors are not a problem. They're not a problem. And so, but for, for Thomas, you know, this story, this, 
this story that the, the disciples tell, it's a very, very fantastic story, that they've seen him. They've seen him and he's risen. Now, a lot of people will say that Thomas is an example, of, not a good example of faith. And I would submit to you that that's partially true. In the beginning, sure, he had a lot of reservations. Uh, so, would, so would many of us. If, if somebody told me that you know, a dear friend of mine had risen from the dead, I might be kind of tempted to not believe him. As much as I would love to see that person living and breathing and walking again, chances are I would probably be very incredulous. And this is where we find Thomas. And yet, again, uh, we hear that the Lord comes back. And again, it says, behind the locked doors, you know, the locked doors of his mind. You know, like, I can't believe it. I just won't believe it. But then he does say something that I think is wonderful. He says, unless I see the nail marks and I touch the nail marks and I touch the wound in his side, because they were, even though they were, had run away and they were at a distance watching the whole thing, the whole uh, horrible thing happening on Good Friday, that they, saw the, they saw the wounds being incurred in his flesh at that time. They, they, they knew. Those, those wounds were, you know, his, his calling card, if you will. They were proof positive that it was him. And so Thomas, in some ways, has a great desire. He doesn't d deny, but he wants to see the risen Christ. He wants to see the nail marks. He wants to see the wound in the side because he knows that that will be the true Jesus that he left on Good Friday. And so the Lord grants him this wonderful request, you know, and in this wonderful, evocative, tender moment, he says, give me your hand, give me your hand. Thomas, give me your hand. Here, now, now touch the nail marks. See? Here, now, no, don't, wait a minute, there's more. Now, touch the side. See that wound? Yeah, it's me. It really is me. And so even though Thomas starts off as a, a doubter, a skeptic, uh, he probably makes one of the greatest proclamations of Christ and his divinity when he says, my Lord and my God. And that's what this wonderful period of mystagogia hopefully will lead all of us to as we meditate and prayerfully re recall, you know, these wonderful events of the Lord's appearing to his disciples. Uh, in this mystagogia period. And just know that the Lord longs to reveal himself to us, no matter what kind of locked doors or barriers we might want to put up and say, eh, I don't believe that, or I wish I could believe that, but I can't. You know, he, he longs uh, to gently take you literally by the hand and guide you to those, those saving wounds so that you too can know the peace that he longs to give you. Well, may God bless you today and every day, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.